Thank you, Carolina. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Thanks to be there. It's my first talk ever in French or English or whatever. Uh, so, if I'm nervous, that's hopefully, I guess it's normal. Um, before, before I start, I will just present, I will just make some excuses for the expert of Bitcoin. I uh, will take some shortcut to, for, you, for everyone to, to understand the principle. So I know that you, some of the Bitcoin experts may be offended by the shortcut I will take. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, basically, this talk is about uh, this and an amazing the Bitcoin network by regrouping addresses using public sources. So we'll start right away because I only got one, half an hour to, uh, to make the talk. So I'll go right away. So first of all, what this talk is not about. Uh, those questions, I read it a lot, I, I have it every, every time I talk about Bitcoin, I have those questions, and seriously, I hate answering those questions because I don't have any opinion on those questions, mostly. Uh, I don't care, I don't know if Bitcoin will replace all currency, if you buy a ASIC cluster, that's your choice, uh, who is Satoshi Nakamoto, I have no idea that you have. Uh, every sentence that starts with, does empty guts, does something, something, I don't care, and is Bitcoin real money? Uh, <laughs> it's a pen. <laughs> so now, what is the, what is the talk about? Uh, it's about addresses, about block, blockchain, transaction, and what is the limit of pseudo anonymity? Because we tell that Bitcoin is an anonymous network, but it's not exactly it. Uh, so during this presentation, I'll try to 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 teach you how to associate addresses to a possible entity, and then after use external sources information to match a real person identity over a uh, a, a, a node of the network. And finally, we'll get a tool release because, you know, I'm pretty sure you just won't have the tools and, uh, and try to, to, to use it at your own. So first of all, uh, Bitcoin 101, uh, as, I can, as I said, I'll do some shortcut. So first of all, an address is, is your identity on the network. It's based on the public key. So basically, you generate a, pub a public private key. Uh, you take your public key, you hash it, you encode it, and you get an address. So that's mostly it. So that's a simpler representation of a private key, a, pri a public key, sorry. And so far, I've seen 70 million addresses on the network. Uh, now for the block and blockchain. A block mostly contains transactions. So when a transaction is created on a network, it is in the unconfirmed state. As soon as it's included in the block, it became confirmed. Uh, depending, like I, was, I know for a Bitcoin expert, uh, you have to wait some blocks to make sure that's really, really still confirmed in the block. But for our purpose of the the, the presentation, when a when a transaction is in the block, it's confirmed. Um, the block are chained together and they create the blockchain. So the chain of block that created and start creating so the big registry of all the transaction is the blockchain, and a block is created every is mined every 10 minutes. And as I said previously, new transactions are included in this new block created by the network, and they are became in the confirmed state. So that will be in the transaction history forever, or at least for the time that Bitcoin exists. Um, transaction. So one thing to understand is a transaction is a Mooney movement. As you do transaction all days um, in the real life. Well, Bitcoin is still the real life, but well, you understand what I mean. Uh, so basically, one thing is the input equals the output. So for example, here on the slide, if you want to pay Bob, so Alice wants to pay Bob, mm -hmm. she will refer to previous transaction where Alice received money from Fred and Alice received money from Charles. Uh, and then she will say, okay, I received two Bitcoins in this transaction. I received three Bitcoin in the other transaction. Now I have the right to spend those Bitcoin and to send it to someone else. So basically she will send it to Bob. So the output here will be Bob plus Bitcoin. Two plus three equals five. If Alice wanted to send only one Bitcoin to Bob, what she, what she have done is, for example, send one Bitcoin to Bob and four to Alice. So she's sending the change back to herself. So that's, in, if you want to send money to someone, you basically send the money you want and keep the rest by sending it to your, yourself directly. So that's the important that the amount of input equals the output. As I said previously, 
uh, Alice referred to previous transaction to say, that, hey, guys, I received money in this transaction back, back in the days. Now we'll, I would like to spend them. So she referring to output of previous transaction. So Alice said, OK, I have this transaction here. I received money in the output. Now I will spend it as an input in the new transaction. So that's it. So basically, she, she just write that, OK, in the, in, in the ledger, I have received money there. I now spend it and sign it in the new transaction. And to prove that I have the right to send it, and to prove that it's really me that have these addresses, I will sign the transaction, the input, to make sure, to prove you that I own the private key associated to these addresses. And fun fact, I have approximately 50. I, uh, other point, guys, uh, when I was in elementary school, I think I, I missed a class where we're explaining numbers in English. I'm pretty dumb in, with number in English, I'm sorry. So 65 million transactions that have been seen on the network. Uh, so as I said previously, so input and output. So input, so no, sorry, output is an amount of money that you want to send. And next to the hash of the recipient public key, so for example, I want to send money to Laurent next, next year. I take his public key, I hash it, and put 3 Bitcoin, the hash of Laurent public key. And when Laurent wants to spend the money he received from me, what he will do, he will take the hash when he received money from me. Those, so we take the transaction hash, put it there, said, she received, said he received money uh, from me uh, in this output. He will sign all the previous transaction with his private key, and put this public key next to it for the network to verify that the identity, to verify the signature. So when the, the, the network verifies the signature, what's happened is the network take the public key, she, uh, the network hash the public key and compare it to the previous hash 160. And if it's matched, it's say, okay, so that's good, so the, the public key match. Now I have to verify that he owns the private key associated to this public key. So basically, it will, the, the network will take the public key and verify the signature that is made with the private key. And if the signature is good, he said, okay, so that's a good person. And he proved me that he had this private key. So I'll do a small recap here because I may lost some, some of some people in the process. So basically you have a private key, you hash it, you get a hash 160, you encode it, and you get an addresses. So that's important for my tool. So that's why I, I redo the, 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 the diagram there. And the other, the other is really like the, the exchange mechanism, the transaction mechanism. So as you can see, in the transaction three, you got input that's referred to transaction one output and transaction two output. So I will take the first input, get the output referred, take the hash 160, encode it, and get the address zero. I'll do the other thing for the other one here. So I will take transaction output at index zero, so this one. I'll take this hash 60 here, I'll convert it to an addresses and get another addresses. So basically, if the transaction is valid, that I mean that I was able to sign input one and input zero. Both of the input I was able to sign with the private key associated to those addresses. That means that possess at a certain point, I was able to have those two private key on my position to sign and to create a valid transaction. So I can tell that those two addresses belong to one entity on the network. So that's two addresses that belong to one entity. It could be a person, it could be an automated system, it could be a laundering scheme, it could be anything, but it belongs to an entity in the network. So for example, if in this, this slide I have four transactions that I parse, and I found that addresses one and two was used together in a transaction. I found that addresses four, five, six was used sim uh, 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 simultaneously in the, in the transaction, and seven, ten, and also another transaction that used two, four, seven. So basically, I can associate it like this. Like it, okay, so that means that the person I have the address one, two, four, seven because it, it, it reused the same addresses in different transactions. So by doing this, you're leaking the information that you have one, two, four, seven. And you can do for all the nodes and then merge it together and tell that that's all the addresses of an entity. 
So basically, you can regroup addresses telling that those addresses belong to an entity on the network. But I don't know, it's still anonymous. I, I still have addresses. I don't have a real identity that need I have to, to get external source for that. So basically, the goal of the tool is to create a graph of the Bitcoin of the blockchain. So I will take every block, take the transaction of every block, create a node using the input addresses of all those transactions, merge those nodes together, and finally, I will get a graph where a node represents an entity and an edge represents a money flow. That's mean money moving from an entity to another one. My assumption, as I said previously, I assume that if you use multiple addresses in an imp as input of a transaction, they belong to the same entity. That means that there's one special kind of transaction that are negligible, multi-signed transaction. So it's, it's, uh, it's the same principle as uh, in the company, you need to have two person to sign a, a check for the check to be valid. So it's possible to do it in Bitcoin, but the number of transactions that use this kind of, mechani of mechanic is negligible. So basically, we just don't crawl those transactions and assume that it does not exist because they are quite small, it quite, they are quite a small number in the network. And the other assumption is people don't know how to use Bitcoin and reuse addresses in multiple transactions. So instead of sending the change to a new address they created, they send back the change in the, other, in the already existing address and reuse this address multiple times. That means that I can do like the merge that I explained in the previous slide. The tool, now the funny part, because I know you just want to hear a good story and that's a good story. So basically I become with a graph program and say, oh, well, that will be complicated. I will like, it will be really, really complex as a program. I don't know how many, I don't know if I, may, I will be able to do it for the NorSec presentation. And finally, the graph problem takes me a day, a day and a half. And the big data problem take me until last week to figure out. So it worked well in theory. The data is public. That will be easy, right? You know, you have all the blockchain. You can, you can download it from the internet. It's, it's easy. It's public. And it's only node and memory. So that means that's an array of bytes and integer. So that will totally fit in memory. Like, I have more than enough memories. Well, I was wrong, as you can imagine. So idea number one, get a block from the blockchain, take each transaction of this block, take each input of the transaction, get the reference output to get the hash 160, calculate the, ad the Bitcoin addresses from this hash 60, put it in the graph, and finally watch it run for three months, <laughs> and flipping tables. So basically, first idea was wrong. Idea number two now, so I started over. Get a block, take each transaction of the block, take each input of this transaction, decompress the, the public key in the input, calculate the addresses for the public key because you know the hash 160 is just a hashing of the public key, and wait, those addresses does not exist. So all the addresses that I calculated, are, in fact, were never existing. So what I mean, I did something wrong there. So again, a table has been flipped. So, edit on the tree, understand what you're doing wrong in number two. In fact, before converting it to an hash 160, you don't have to uncompress the public key. And do good code to grab the Bitcoin, like object oriented, like linked list, Python, good code, everything was like, was clean, was understandable. Uh, it was my best 100 line of code that I made. Everything was clear, it was easy to follow. Find that your merge routine is linear. And we will, I will st still be crawling by now if I wouldn't have stopped this program. It, it would have worked, but I, would ha I wouldn't be able to present today. So again, flip tables, so idea number, number four. Yeah, that's something I do when I have problems. So, and I decided to revert the clean code. I did crappy code with hash map, hash table, that was totally a mess, impossible to follow, but it worked. So watch a crawler, run, run the crawler for two or three hours, get the out of memory exception, said, okay, now I have big problems. So I cannot do it in linked list, and I cannot do it in hash map. I'm, I'm screwed, mostly. So another table and then flip. Idea number five, realize that you are running Python 32 bit <laughs> with a space limit of four gig. <laughs> Decide to use Python for, for the 64 bit. Run it for six, 16 hours straight and get another memory exception. And this one was real. I exhausted my RAM of my laptop 
plus my swap file. So, okay, no problem. I'll use a DB. I'll just dump the DB. Like, every 1,000 block, I'll just dump it into DB and then merge with the DB. I'll, I'll figure out how to make it. And my transitional DB just died, mostly. So I was still in a bad position. And finally, I was able to use MongoDB with multiple instances, like inserting each 1,000 block into the DB, wait for 44 hours, 24 hours, sorry. I know what I'll tell you. Um, and finally, I was able to make it work. So the minimum system requirement for running the tools, like for crawling it, not the DB, for crawling it, it's 30 gig of hard drive, 32 gig of RAM. Python 64-bit, six, for sure. 24 hours, of, uh, 24 hour of free time. So, I'm, are you are you willing to do it live? And four table to flip. That's really really important. If you will not succeed it. So finally, the part that you that you want, the demo. So the tools like this. That's my tools. I know. <laughs> it's the least impressive tool ever. <laughs> So basically, what I will present today is, like, as I tell you, I was dumping into DB, so ha I have the MongoDB on my computer, and we're going to have a real use case. So this use case is take from Radio Canada uh, uh, stories. Uh, basically, they, they interview someone who has a crypto locker and lock all this file, and she had to pay to get back his video from her kids, and like the classical crypto locker stuff. Uh, the point is they didn't, they didn't blur the addresses. So as you can see, or may not, if you're at the back, you have like the kind of dense, you can maybe guess the beginning of the addresses. And since I have a DB, so I will be able to find these addresses back. So we are doing it live. So, so basically, whoop, I will not scoop that. This one. So I have the DB there. So I have the DB. If I if I do, for example, I have approximately, like as I said before, 70 million entries in database. So I'll find. I'll try to guess the. The addresses, so I'm sorry, I know if you know I'm, I'm working on Slide right now. Annexes, that's what I need. Okay, so the address so the addresses that we found start with this comment. I'm scooping it a bit in my presentation, but well, it's for the it's for the bed. So basically the address is starting with one L G N U V something something something. So oh yeah, nice, we found an addresses. That's really interesting. That's I crawled this addresses and it's associated with a node ID. I'm, I'm, I want to know if, for example, this bad person have other addresses that he's using. We'll see. So basically, I'll try to get for the node ID. So I, I will tell, get me all the addresses of this node ID. So basically, we got four other addresses that are associated with this person. <laughs> Thank you, uh, my groupies. Um, <laughs> so basically, what we can do now is we want to know how many money this crypto malware locker received. So it was so. What we know now it's this this people behind this crypto locker. Also, at least four other three other addresses. So we'll go on the website and check for the addresses. Oh, this one I've received eleven Bitcoin. Oh, this one two Bitcoin. This one, 2.5. And this one, 49, so 60. So at a certain point, she this addresses of the crypto locker received approximately 70 Bitcoin. And it was worthing in the time that they did it, approximately $600 US per Bitcoin. So approximately, they received $250,000 with this campaign, at least. So what we can do next is, for example, well, okay, so I have like a use case, a real use case from, um, from ESET. They tell me, okay, uh, we found those addresses and like 
in the blog post, they said, okay, if we discover crypto malware, by high threat partner, find it, it had these addresses. And also what the, the, the version that we got has these addresses. We think it's pretty sure that they are linked together. Well, we can confirm for real. So for example, if we take the node ID of the first addresses and find it, you see that the node ID is 1258538. And the other node ID, as you may think, and you're right, will be exactly the same node ID. So we can confirm for real that two addresses belong to the same person. So, and now what we want to know is how many addresses that this, this entity possesses as addresses. I'm really slow typing, I'm sorry guys. Read eight. So we got over 160,000 different address related to this node. So basically that's a laundry scheme or that's an automated tools or someone. And if, if like we want to go further, we can know how many money we have, but seriously guys, I'm sorry, but I, I will not do it today because the, I'm continuing my slide. It's in the what's next. Basically what's next for my tools is to release the crappy code that I tell you before that you can crawl the network. And you can take the DB from there and continue crawling from now to like the, so the DB that, we have, that will be available is made uh, Monday, not this week, the week before. So you can continue crawling for this block and just go further and you'll get all the, D, all the database uh, until now. So basically, uh, that's all the group, all the transaction, all that you, all the node ID that represent a person and the addresses that related to this node ID. As you can know, what you can do right now is to take every addresses, find something interesting on the internet using, for example, Google, and then find other addresses associated with the addresses that belong to the same entity. So basically the version two will be the follow the money. So basically I will crawl again the blockchain and get every transaction and do the money movement between the node. So you'll be able to know how many money does it move from one node to the other node, or how many money were sent into a big long risk scheme. And then from this big long risk scheme, is there any like amount of money that looked like the, the first that was sent? So we can say, okay, she was trying, she was node number one here, sending it to the long risk scheme and then send it back to the, to the node number two. So we said, okay, that's probably the same person because was as much money that is sent into the language scheme that is exit and go into this node also. So that will be in version two eventually and it will be still available on my GitHub also. And version three eventually will get the collaborative tool so that people will be able to comment, to add comment on this node said, okay, this node is probably this bad guy. This node is probably this person. This node is probably this system. And you'll be able to disanalyze the Bitcoin network like this. So that's it for me. Do we have any questions? Do we have time for questions or I busted? I'm pretty.